Hi and welcome to this, our fourth program from the Acid Base Unit. Today we're going to take a look at a review buffer solutions. Buffer solutions have the ability to resist changes in pH due to the addition of small amounts of acids or base. Let's start by looking at, first of all at a beaker that is not buffered. Here I have a beaker that contains just distilled water. And to it, we'll add one drop or about one cubic centimeter of hydrochloric acid. The result of that would be a drastic change in the pH of the solution. The mass would indicate that you should end up here with a pH of a solution somewhere around 3. So a change of 4 pH units. Similarly, if I add a very strong base to the situation, some sodium hydroxide, I would finish up then with a solution whose pH would be somewhere about 11. Again, a change of about 4 pH units to the addition of 1 cubic centimeter. Now repeat this operation with a buffered solution and we would get a different result. First of all, our addition of the hydrochloric acid, we would probably finish up with a solution whose pH would probably be somewhere in the order of 5, depending on the nature of the buffer that we make. And finally, the addition of the base, a similar result, a similar small change in pH, perhaps finishing up with a pH of about uh, 9, a change of only 2 units. So this describes the behavior of a buffer. One thing you have to be careful about in the definition is to emphasize that the resistance only acts over a small range or a small amount of acids or base and isn't infinite. How these buffers work is the presence of a weak conjugate acid-base pair solution that exists in the solution. So let's take a look at how an acidic buffer would be made. In an acidic butter, for we would have a weak acid, so say something like ethanoic acid, CH3COOH. Also present, its conjugate um, base, which would be CH3COO minus. Now that might be provided by adding, say, something like sodium ethanoate to the solution. Now, let's say we bring along our small container that has some acid in it. The basic part of the buffer will react with that. So the CH3 COO minus will essentially undergo an equilibrium reaction with the addition of this shifting in the forward direction to produce the weak acid. This consumes or reduces the amount of the hydrogen ion. Similarly, if I add a small amount of base to the solution, the acid part kicks in and the ethanoic acid will react with that base by shifting in the forward direction, turning the hydroxide ion into a water molecule and generating the conjugate base. So one needs the presence of both ions to act as a buffer. And usually in a buffer, you wish to have equal amounts of these two species, therefore allowing you to buffer equally, both in the addition of H plus and the addition of OH. In a basic buffer, our ingredients would be a weak base. So say something like ammonia and its conjugate which would be the ammonium ion. And again, that might be provided by, say, something like ammonium chloride. In a similar fashion, if we add acid, then the conjugate base portion of our buffer will react with that to produce the ammonium ion by shifting in the forward direction. If we add OH, then the conjugate acid will react with that, shifting in the forward direction to produce water and ammonia. So whether we have an acidic buffer or a basic buffer, um, this will determine the range of pH for which your solution is protected or buffered. 
Now to make a buffer solution, we have two avenues. In our first avenue, we can mix together a weak acid with a salt containing its conjugate base. So for my example here, I'll start off with say, my weak acid will be hydrofluoric acid. We need to have something containing its conjugate base, which is the F minus ion. Now you can't just get bags of F minus ions, so we would probably have to select something like sodium fluoride. And to have something that's roughly equal amounts, we would perhaps use uh, 0.1 moles of this and 0.1 moles of this and mix them together in our solution. Let's take a look at a one that's made from a base. Um, so we have this combination, the bicarbonate ion and its conjugate partner. Um, we could use, say, the carbonate ion. They differ by only one H+. Plus. So again, we have ions present, so we probably might use something like sodium bicarbonate or sodium hydrogen carbonate in conjunction with sodium carbonate. And again, perhaps equal amounts, 0.1 mole and 0.1 mole of each of them. So these can be mixed directly in the solutions to create our buffer pair. Our second method of creating a buffer solution involves conducting a little bit of a reaction. We could mix together a weak acid with a strong base, but not in equal amounts because we only want to partially ionize this solution. I'm going to demonstrate that. So for my weak acid, let's again start with ethanoic acid. And I'm going to mix this together with a strong base. Reaction will proceed in the forward direction primarily, and I'm going to end up producing water. And um, CH3, COO, NA. Now, this is my weak acid here. And over here, this ion is the weak base. So this reaction creates my conjugate acid base pair. Now, I want to make sure that I have equal amounts of these in my buffer solution. So let's say I initially started in my container with one mole per liter of this. I would add approximately half of this amount to partially react with it. So I'm going to put in 0.5 moles of NaOH. And initially there was none of this and none of this. This is my limiting reagent, so it's going to be completely consumed. It's all going to be reacted, and that's going to end up making 0.5 moles of this, and it's going to use up 0.5 moles of this. That will be my change. So when the reaction is over, at equilibrium in this case, I'll have 0.5 of this and 0.5 of this. Thereby I've made my weak base and I have approximately equal amounts of them. So this is but another way. Let's take another look at a, an example of this using a weak base with a strong acid. So for my weak base let's start with ammonia and react it with HCl. The products of the reaction. You can view them as ammonium ions and chloride ions. So here I have my weak base and here my weak acid. Again I would start with excess of the weak base and I would partially react it. So put in say 0.5 of this 
and initially my solution has none of these. All of this is going to be used up in the reaction. So this is also going to go down because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And this one will go up, as will the chloride ion. However, once I reach the end of the reaction, I'll have 0.5 of this and 0.5 of this. Again, approximately equal amounts of my conjugate acid-base pair. In our next uh, program, we'll take a look at titration curves and how this buffering action takes place in those as well. Thanks for watching.